there, Internet. It's Mogwai here, and I got another Legends of Runeterra video for you guys today. And today we're going to play some Nocturne Nightfall, what I like to call Passive Aggro, which is a very compelling take on the aggressive sort of like archetype in card games. And I'm a big fan of Nocturne's design. I also want to clarify a few things because the first couple of days of the expansion, I saw countless posts on Twitter and comments on Reddit of people saying that Nocturne is bad. Nocturne feels very underwhelming. Nocturne is the worst of the bunch in the expansion. And that is just so far from the truth, it's crazy. And I want to explain a little bit as to why, right? The reason why people think Nocturne is bad, and this is going to come off very arrogant, you know, whatever. The reason why people think Nocturne is bad is because people are bad. People don't know how to play Nocturne. And I'm going to clarify that a little bit. So, uh, I didn't really have uh, much to refute these claims with at first because I didn't play Nocturne early on. Uh, it took me a few days to actually try him out. And when I tried him out, I was super impressed by how difficult this deck can be to play. And I also spoke with several high-level players who reached Master's Rank playing Nocturne. In particular, there was one, his name is Nick Makes Plays. Well, his username, uh, shout outs to him. He's also a streamer, I believe. And he almost exclusively, I think, played Nightfall Aggro. And he told me that the first 20 games that he played with Nocturne, he lost more than half. But then from that point onwards, he got a really strong win streak going on as he figured out all the intricacies and like, you know, how to play the deck or pilot it close to its full potential. Why is an aggressive deck like this so difficult to play? Especially a deck that has, that peaks at four mana. Like we have one unit as a three of at four mana and then the rest is three mana or lower. The first impression you get when you look at this is like, okay, I gotta play shit as fast as I can, go phase and repeat until I kill my opponent before they get their own strategy going, right? That's how aggro decks generally play out. But that's why I like to call this passive aggro, because when it comes to playing Nocturne, due to the nature of his leveled up form, you have to find the sweet balance between early aggression to enable Nocturne's level up, because you need to level him up by attacking with five or more Nightfall allies, and building up your hand so that you can really capitalize on, on your opponent in one specific turn in which you drop Nocturne and then you start dropping a bunch of cheap units and triggering his effect again and again, applying minus one to the opposing board so that your opponent cannot block your fearsome units. More than half of the total damage output in an average match with this deck, if you played it correctly, is dealt throughout one turn because you're building up for that finish, right? But like I said, finding that sweet spot in between is what's hard and it's what you gotta get experience and play more and more of this deck to actually get good at right so i'm gonna try to give you guys a few tips of what i've learned so far playing this deck i don't i don't claim to be the best nocturne player because i haven't committed to this archetype alone like other players like i i'm always featuring different decks on my youtube channel so i haven't spent as much time right but the little time that I spent, I have learned a few things, and I, I think I can give you guys a few tips regarding how to play this so that you do a bit better. First of all, uh, you gotta keep in mind the matchup that you're facing. If you're facing something like Fro your Ramp, you gotta watch out for Avalanche, right? You can't overcommit onto the board early on with units with two health or less. So you, you gotta keep it like two units at a time that can die to Avalanche at max, I, I would recommend, right? Uh, if you're facing aggressive decks, you will have to pump up the gas a little bit and really rely on clever Diana turns to pick off your opponent's board. Uh, if you're facing like Ezreal decks, then you have to also try to not overcommit and make good use of your Glimpse Beyonds, amongst other things. Also Pale Cascade, really really vital you set this up against control decks properly so you're able to dodge removal and uh, apply extra damage a very powerful card if used correctly so keep that in mind and generally speaking when you lead off uh you're very happy to lead off with Lun lunari dust bringer this does give you dust petal dust which allows you to set up a nightfall play uh, and use your spell mana as a way to ramp into unit mana potentially, or, or unit cards as well. Uh, and don't be afraid to lead off with Stygian Onlooker turn one. 
Why? Because playing Sijin on Lurker turn 1 and attacking with them gives you a Nightfall attack. Even though you're not triggering his attack, he's still a Nightfall unit, which helps you level up Nocturne. Like I said, you want to build up for that late game turn, but you need to level up Nocturne before. So you need to find, you need to be able to get enough attacks with Nightfall units to get that going. So you do need to apply a little bit of pressure. But at the same time, don't overcommit early on. Build up spell mana whenever you can whenever you don't have a clear play build up spell mana so that you can enable nightfall plays don't don't play on curve like your one drop into your two drop don't do that try to set up your lunari shade stalkers earlier on this is like the best unit to to set up early uh unless your opponent has a very aggressive uh unit based deck then you want to use diana early on to uh, start picking off their board right but generally speaking shade stalker is a fantastic unit to start dropping in early uh, obviously after you enable the nightfall so you can start hitting your opponent with elusive attacks and also uh, focusing on nocturnes level up as you get to that point you gotta reach a point in which you start building up uh, both cheap and three drop nightfall units to pack alongside nocturne and you also need to find the right moment to play nocturne without being worried about removal that's why i have a one-off of the shroud of darkness i think this card can be really really neat as a late game enabler to uh play onto nocturne so that he has spell shield and thus even if your opponent does have an answer for him he requires at least two to be able to make it out of that turn once you build up uh, a certain amount of nightfall units you will be able to start triggering uh, nocturne's effect and uh, you will you just completely obliterate them as they will not be able to block anything. Make good use of the vulnerable effect from Nocturne. Keep in mind that it's a permanent vulnerable effect, unlike Sejuani. So in case uh, you're not able to finish off the opponent in a specific turn, uh, this also allows you to play Nocturne on your opponent's attacking turn and give something vulnerable to pick it off on the next turn as well, which is... It can be really uh, reliable, especially because we don't have the best interaction with this deck outside of our challengers, right? Nocturne and Diana can actually become our best sources of removal, alongside Unspeakable Horror, which can help us ping off and finish off certain units. So that's the nature of the deck, just finding the right balance between those two. It depends on the matchup. I can't really uh, go deeper into details because I, I would spend way too long in this intro. But hopefully I, I give you guys a bit of a, at least an initial impression or initial idea on how to pilot this deck. This is my version of the deck. I run a full set of Glimpse Beyond. Uh, some players uh, are choosing not to uh, run Glimpse Beyond in certain decks with Stalking Shadows because they feel like Stalking Shadows kind of like substitute it. I don't believe in that. I think card draw is incredibly valuable in The Legends of Runeterra. Uh, more so than in other card games. And especially in a low curve deck like this that's building up for a late game burst. Cheap card draw is never too much unless yeah there is always a certain line right but having a full set of two copies that draw your cards i think is great it allows us to not run out of gas and it, it's really useful on stuff like spacey sketcher after we got the invoke value out of her i like spacey sketcher in this deck over the likes of solari soldier because even though she has a worse stat line i really like being able to make use of dust metal dust when i don't uh, when i pack up too many of these or other cards like uh, ephemeral cards that i draw with stalking shadows or fading memories that i don't really plan on using i can convert them to something neat like for example other nightfall enablers such as the serpent or the charger very very good nightfall enablers uh, because of how cheap they are which is why i really really like her in this build and uh, pale cascade is broken this is one of the most broken cards in the game uh, because it is a cheap combat trick that replaces itself so we run a full set of it and that's basically all i gotta say i'm gonna let the gameplay speak for itself and uh you know uh explain more uh it's just so that i don't spend like a you know an hour just talking about it but really really compelling archetype uh, i really enjoy playing it it's very rewarding and uh, it does have quite the learning curve don't be discouraged early on if uh you're not doing well with it because even the best players have struggled at first but once you get a good grasp of it it's gonna feel so much more rewarding than something like leona which is just basically playing shit on curve right <laughs> so uh i i really encourage you guys to try this out it's a really cool mechanic and uh, I'm a big fan. So without further ado, I'm going to stop talking. Have a soul day. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, stay tuned for daily Legends of Frontera content. I got, I got a little bit of a brain fart there. Hope you enjoy the games. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.
I mean, this is really important. I'm gonna keep this. I like the idea of getting multiple Doom Beasts to trigger, you know, the effect. Like, it, gu it guarantees me, like, but I don't know how what, what that does for my curve, unfortunately. I'm gonna take you. Hold us down. I had to play around uh, up, around Rehus. Even if you have single combat at this point, you're dead. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh. 
<laughs> oh boy. I, I know... I know how mean this deck can be. Alright, so I am gonna keep Diana. I'm gonna drop these two. And you may ask why I'm doing that? Well, because I wanna search for my... Uh, my, you know, Nightfall Vile Feast. What's the name of that card? You guys know? What deck do you recommend to climb with? Uh, I, I climbed to Diamond with uh, this deck, actually. With uh, Lulu Shen. It's on my mobile lyrics, if you type exclamation deck. Who does not know the name um, Come, that's not, that's not as exciting as you think it is. Uh, Keep up the great entertainment, Mogwai. Don't let tough times get to you equals. I got the Vazemus. I'm playing around. I'm gonna play around. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna play around. Rangers resolve. Can you stomach this? That's a good trade. He's new. <laughs> Sorry. I take that, Lulu. No. Genevieve? <laughs> you okay there?
These woods belong to us. Run them through. Hardly fair. Another spark. Whoa, don't eat that! Head to the face! Guess we're going! I'll do my best! Harry, repost, you are toast! Aha! Could take you out. I'd rather take you out. Which one of these two do I eliminate? This will be the top deck of Relentless Pursuit. I wanted I wanted the knock to gasm, but oh well. <laughs> uh, guys, I'm really digging this strategy. Uh, this matchup seems rough though. Well, it depends. I'm gonna keep this in. I don't want to like spread out with one drops too much in this matchup. Uh, I actually want to keep Glimpse Beyond because my opponent's gonna be targeting my shit. So I just need to find the right moment to take him out with Nocturne, but I also need some prior damage, right? That's the tricky aspect of this deck. That's like the puzzle to solve. But this this is gonna be a tough puzzle to crack because he's got a lot of like really, because Twisted Fate is really good against us with the uh, red card, and they also have like a lot of like Make It Rain is very scary. I can't like say no to this though. We were peaceful once. Hiding. Let's be patient. Be nothing left when I'm done. Rise! 
has the serpent on it. Good work. And for the new expansion smiley face. I could have used this. Game's heating up. Alright, missed one. More, I have to use my Shroud of Darkness on Diana. I definitely have to use my Shroud of Darkness on Diana. Even though he could spread out anyways. Now I don't think I can win. Alright, GG. You got us. T tough one to crack. Tough puzzle to crack because they just come at just come at us from so many different angles, and they have so many like like make it rain, so many AOE effects that it, it's it's a difficult matchup. But it's definitely winnable. I still could have played them differently, which is you know nice to know. Let's drop the Doom Beast. I'm gonna keep Pale Cascade because the card is just fundamentally busted. Nothing but the stink of glory and sweat. Fight or die. Stow the rations! Shackle the prisoners! Night flowers upon my blade. They don't need riches. You cannot hold us down. This 
land is ours. Dealing coins and carnage. Light flowers upon my blade. The promise of a new moon upon you, Green Tender. Success gets you noticed around here. Bloom and fade with the morning. the land in silver. Ha! Find your path in the dark and follow no false light. I want your gasm, Nocturne. I want your gasm. I'm gonna drop the Doom Beast. Keep everything else here. <laughs> the popping sound, <laughs> it throws me off every time. Night flowers upon my blade. If you want to trade that into that, that's fine. Batter him! No one goes hungry! Completely fine. Whatever the cost. For Mother Russia. Alright, we're starting to work for, for Nocturne's level up. Yeah, yeah, I'm up. I could have dragged, I probably, I probably should have dragged the War Chef. Yeah, I knew that he had a repost. Yeah, I should definitely drag this. Give 
bite on an empty stomach. Alright, so if he has a single combat, I can react to the speaker of horror onto this. Because that's his way to single combat this into this. Yeah. He could have another single combat too. So no matter what I play here, it doesn't really matter. For a lower curve. I mean, I just like the fact that the the three two like gives me a. Oh. I don't know what this is, but I have met it. Only a fool would enter battle unprepared. It's our time. Could be playing my deck. And here's where I'd paint my constellation. I'm gonna go with the uh, Crescent Guardian. There's nothing a good giggle can't fix. If I attack you, paint your feelings. He does have double Rangers Resolve, though. Let's go with this. It's not, it's not exactly my deck, he's playing the Grizzled Ranger. I think I can go without. Spark. 
Whatever the cost. Whatever the cost. I'm gonna go for the Pale Cascade for more damage. Oh, okay. Alright. <laughs> I'm sorry, little girl. I'm sorry. He's gonna eat you. I'm sorry! Where's my nocturne? Soldier to me. Okay, that's spooky. We could take the hit this time around though, because we're not threatened by relentless pursuit. Single combat. He has a single combat. Okay. We were peaceful once. The fate of mortals and spirits falls to me. Off we go! Go down! For truth. Resist. Cygnus, how I missed your light. Thank the mother you're all right. What have you learned? 